Hey everyone, what's good? This is Kapira here and we're going to do a little studio run through today of how Still Get Chills was made. So just a few things before we get started on this one. I'm going to cover just the production on this one. I'm not going to cover the vocals because that was done in another project. And I think most people probably want to hear about how it was actually the music was done on that side as well. Um, I also i am going to apologise for the muffled mic and everything like that. My actual microphone's not here with me, it's in London, I'm doing a bit of a move up there at the moment, and yeah, I don't have that on me at the moment, anyway. Uh, if you haven't heard, still got chills, this is how it sounds. So yeah, go over to Spotify, check it out, or any other platform that you like to use, Amazon Music, Apple Music, um, Spot, SoundCloud itself, it's on everything pretty much. So yeah, go check it out, and then come over to here, and we'll go through how it was made. So, we'll start with the intro. Alright, nice. So that's how that sounds. And we're going to start with piano. We'll go through this. So this is how the piano sounds. And how I like to do my pianos, uh, especially on this track as well, because it's quite a bright, dancey kind of piano. Uh, this is how the actual piano sounds. And I've got this layer plugin, which is just inbuilt with FL, and it's just the same MIDI clip which goes through free plugins. So this one really gives it the brightness. The M1 House Piano from the Korg M1 series. And yeah, I mean, it's if you don't have it and you want to get into kind of piano house or that dance kind of stuff, this is pretty much used in every single song that I know. You know, it's great and definitely go check it out. So yeah, there's that. And then I've got the Dance Piano 2K7 patch from Nexus. I kind of took away the second and third instruments there because that gives it a little bit of thickness and I didn't want that in that sound because I've got the true pianos here which really gives it thickness so all in all those sounds all together give that now in terms of the processing I split them into two groups so I've got the true piano on its own and that's really just got a little bit of compression going on as you can see here I, I just used a preset with a glue it just seemed to work perfectly with that one a little bit of a saturation knob just to beef it up and I've rolled down the higher frequencies so I can give more room to the brighter ones coming from the M1 and the Nexus patch so you got that and then you've got these two here as you can see you can see kind of why I've rolled down on the lower end on the high ends on the beefier piano so it can really let these two breathe so and these two are really quite punchy so I've got the Nexus one just has a bit of an attack coming on from that and a little bit of a delay just so it's got yeah as you can hear just not too much but just something that's going on there um did I even yeah I did yeah sorry I'm just talking to myself don't mind me and then this is obviously where the main sound kind of comes from just little bits of EQ tweaking, not really much going on with that. And then both of those two come into this, so it's almost like a bus channel here, where again, I've got a transient master, giving it attack. Stereo shaper, so I'm delaying the right side of the stereo, just delaying it by a little bit. So I've done, as you can see in the corner here, when I hover over it by 4.6 milliseconds. What that does, it's called the harsh effect, where it just manipulates your ears into thinking something sounds stereo, when in fact, it's really just, mono so for instance I'll get rid of that you can hear it's just much different you can hear that whip that's just being done just by delaying a little bit there but you know it's not really doing too much there but be careful with that because what it can do is when you put it into mono compatibility so you know it's nice and stereo but then when you put it into mono sometimes the higher frequencies can cancel each other out and then it will sound really disgusting and muffled so just make sure you're checking your mix in mono 
when you're doing something like that. So yeah, all of these together root into this, which is just a lot of compression. So again, just a glue compressor. The Supercharged GT, which just, to me, this is from Native Instrument, it's a great plugin. It just makes it, sa makes it sound rich. And it's just really a little bit of light compression, that's all. Transient Master, again, giving out that click. It's quite a stabby sound of a piano. Got Ozone's Exciter, just giving it a tiny little bit of tape saturation there as well. And the Imager, just to bring the lows into mono, because, you know, it's already sounding quite wide as it is. I wanted to bring the lows in to make sure that those weren't, you know, confusing the listener a little bit. Keep your lows mono, in my opinion. So that's how the processing of the piano on this song went. You know, there's quite a lot to that one, but altogether, it's quite simple. And then, yeah, it's just filtered in at the start. So this one's really driving through. And then these two, the volume's actually being automated on this. So it comes up and then back down. Well, again, the filtered one. I only really wanted the true pianos in that part of the verse anyway, because that's really... It, it, you don't want anything bright and stabby, it's just quite ambient, we wanted to do a let room for Maggie's vocals. So yeah, that's how that sounded. Now, other sounds on there as well, uh, we've got these. Really, really nice sounding synth pads. And I'll just show you how this was made. It was just really simple. Silent patch. Most of my sounds for synths are going to be done in silent. Just, it's a plugin that I know off the back of my head. And yeah, it's just absolutely brilliant, really easy to use, and the processing on that, big reverbs, big delays, and yeah, just rolled off the low so it's not getting muffled either, really nice epic sound, and the other one, which I get rid of, I don't need that, is this here, so that really beefy kind of gritty sound, which is where we at? These. As you can see, got a sub. Really easy, just a sine wave oscillator. You know, don't really need to go much on with that. As you see, I've got this as well, which is actually quite good for subs. It's the PSP Vintage Warmer 2. Just adds a little bit of drive to them. And then, yeah, this just filtered. Detune saw waves and a little bit of overdrive on there as well. And I've got an image on there as well, which is again just bringing it into mono on everything below 300 hertz. A little bit of reverb too, but just be careful with that one as well. Make sure that with reverb, you don't want again, I'm cutting this off as you can see in the corner at 300 hertz. You don't really want anything muffled going on in that area. Um, and then yeah, just roll down the lows a little bit and the highs because I didn't want that sounding bright. And together, that's really where the sound's coming. Alright, so that's really where the main synth elements come in, and there's not really much difference. I mean, also you've got high strings here, which is, I believe, a Nexus patch. Yeah, really just simple. Reverb on there, and... There's not really much to say about it, it's just strings, one note holding there. So yeah, that's all the sounds going on in terms of melodic stuff. Now this is all really important down here, these effects. And this is kind of what just gives as well a little bit more ambience to that intro and keeps the listener guessing. This is really easy. These would have just been. Uh, I use splice sounds a lot for my effects. So, for instance, really easy. This one would have been made a massive. So it's just again a sine oscillator pitched down. Not too much going on with that. This was actually a sound of my own, just a reverb tail. If I just reverb reverse that, I'll show you what I mean. If it wants to play. No, it doesn't want to play. Okay, don't worry about that. 
But yeah, all I did when I made that was I had a lead and I gave it a long reverb tail. I just recorded that and reversed it. So that's how that was done. And then this would have just been a synth shot from something, a, a sample pack. And again, that's it. it would have, that sounds almost like a pizzicato kind of like string. And all that would have been done is reversed. With a little bit of delay on there. Really, really, really easy sound, but without those, there's not much going on. So it just, the song kind of falls flat, if you can see. You see how that difference, like there's no way, it doesn't really feel like there's a hit going into that. So impacts, reverses, ambience, it's really like, even here for instance, like, it's just a little bit empty. So make sure that you're including things like that into your songs. I uh, also, as you notice at the top here, I just had a reverse cymbal. And a filtered kick. That is literally all of the intro. Again, I've got a snap going on here too. And then I've got some shaker loops going on here, which again, really, really easy. Just find a sample, get it in there. So that is everything going on there I think leading into the chorus I might even have a bit of a you know a one bar sweep up going on no not even any white noise that's it it's just that was in the entire first verse now let's go to the chorus so now on this part there's not really much going on different apart from everything's kind of filtered out there's not, nothing different going on in the song in the sound so you know they're all sounds that were on the previous eight bars here they're just not filtered they're all coming out you know everything's sounding really great everything's in its own place in the mix so yeah that's not really anything different but thing that really changes here would be the drums so if I just show you how all the drums play out and you know you've got these really big larger than life poppy kind of sounds coming out from here so so that's how the drums sound we've got kick hang on sorry it's actually filtered yeah as you can see just a little bit of compression and EQ on that one nothing too much going on with that we got a clap which is a little bit muffled actually but it's yeah this is really where it comes in so this is the important part and this would have just been a really simple patch that I would have made in definitely contact patch it's got to be contact patch surely yeah it would have been this here so let me just show you what's going on with this. This is Studio Drummer, and it is great for drums like these and great for little fills and stuff. Um, again, I just drew those out, but if you really want something easy, you can just find a groove that you like. Um, if it wants to play. It doesn't, but it's okay. But what you would do is you would find a groove that you liked on this, and then you could use this, and you could just drag out the MIDI. So it's good if you need some ideas as well with kind of drum loops going on there. So we've got that, and again, those are just going to be compressed as anything. You know, like, it's so compressed, but it's even broken. Look at that. Oh, no, that's all right. And again, this one, I didn't want a sharp attack on it, so I just boosted the sustain up, brought the attack down, so it's really filled out. Got some dynamics going on, so we're just controlling. What do I do here? A little bit of the tighter compression on the low end, and then, yeah, just two one ratios. Almost like it's colouring there, but it's just bringing down the mids and the highs, just so it sounds nice in the mix. So yeah, that's the drum kit, and it really does, you know, it just makes those drums pop out. And then the shake loops carries on going. Only other sounds, you still got a snap happening, and we've got a clap. And then that's everything. That is just really simple, and you've got a big clapper as well here. I like that sample a lot kind of makes yeah it's just a high way of bringing in that part there all 
Alright, so that is that. Now I'm going to bring you to the build. I'm going to apologise if there's a little bit of buffering as well because sometimes, especially this part, it's quite high on CPU. You might get a little bit of crackling, might crash a little bit. As you can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through sounds one by one so we don't have to listen to that. So yeah, starts off with this. Alright, snare film, really, really easy. You could just record that and use it in every single song. Uh, that would have been the Kashmir pack from, again, just really, really easy. Just go on Splice Sounds, you can download those. Really, really nice. In terms of processing on that, not really too much, just a bit of a compression going on there. So, this is Waves VC. No, that's not Waves, is it? Um, that's Native Instruments VC2A. And some OTT, just to give it a little bit of brightness there. So, We've already covered the saturation knob and the transit master giving it some kick there too. Get rid of the processing. It sounds a little bit flat. You see. A little bit of reverb there as well. But again, use that scarcely. Sparsely, not scarcely, what am I on about? <laughs> oh, I'm rushing through this. I am. Okay, cool. Now that's just this snare. Let's go through this so I'll explain a little bit how this was made in a bit but in terms of processing with lead I'm gonna go really go through how this is made in detail but it's just built it out so again just harm reverb but I will go through that when we get to the job how that was made very similar to the bass as well yeah so this is just how the bass sounds really thick and then as you notice here we've got high pass filter and the main filter comes up so it goes out and then the low cuts out and really breathes really gives the mix more room to breathe there so yeah there's that anything else that i think is needs to be done um risers yes let's go through these so this is pretty important because you know it really really brings everything into a little bit of tension so there you go got your two fx patches here which we covered earlier if i get rid of them it's just these So we've got a white noise riser, this just would have been a massive patch. So you've got that, really easy. Got a flanger on there, so you can see the depth being modulated. And the EQ here, so I like to make my own patches when it comes to the risers. It is time consuming, but you can kind of make little tweaks. And it's not even necessary to do it, I just like to do it. Um, but that's entirely up to you. You can easily just click and drag in a sample. It's much quicker, much more time convenient. Um, but yeah, so that's the white noise riser. Then we've got a synth riser. If that wants to play out. What's going on there? Oh, that's it. Oh, there, there we go, that's it. I would have cut it out. Again, you see the pictures going up there. And you can just hear that it's got a little bit of reverb going on there as well. So again, just a really simple sound. And then this one. A pitched one. As you see the pitch is being modulated there. Really easy sound. So yeah, you got that. Now, let's get to the drop, which is obviously the most important part of this song. It is there's quite a lot going on here and I'll show you how the sounds are made and everything like that and how the drums are done. So yeah, this is how the drop sounds. Alright, I'm gonna show you back on here because obviously that's too crackly, we can't listen to that at the moment. Alright, 
So let's start with the lead. And yeah, my <laughs> projects do get a little bit messy, but I hope I've caught all the automation on this. So. Let's cover through that. So this would have been a lot of synths going on here. Like with the piano where I had this layer plugin. And everything is kind of playing at the same time. So got this first lead, which sounds like that. One of my favourite sounds going. Um, I use Omicide quite a lot as well. It's just a fantastic multi-band distortion plugin there. Nothing else going on at the time. And yeah, it's just rolled off of blows. So that's the first sound. Second sound, let me see where we're at. Would have just a bit of sim. Really easy. Got a pluck. Another synth lead. This kind of like detuned almost square lead going on there. What's going on with this one? J Asker lead, which is yeah, that's just a great sample that I found from Pag, which is really really great. And then that's not actually playing anything, so we'll just ignore that for now. Um, yeah. And all of them are their own sound pretty kind of. There we go. It's playing now. This would have just been a sample that I found. There we go. So that's direct wave that plug in there. So it's just a nice little sample player which I quite like to use uh, on a few sounds. So yeah, that's how it all sounds with that. And then we've got a lot going on here. So we've got OTT, which is a multiband compression plugin. And there's not much going on there. I've really just kept the depth to 13%. So it's almost like a dry wet plugin, this, I guess. Um, yeah, I haven't really done too much to it with that. Big reverb going on with the Valhalla Room. Ozone's Imager again to bring the lows into mono and the highs nice and wide. Delays going on, so this is ping pong, so it's really giving it some whip. Big reverb. Now, this reverb I'm going to discuss in a little sec because I've turned it off, but it actually automates and then again just running off lows. And here, a bit of dynamic EQ just pumping through the 4 to 6k range and then around the mids too and then bringing down the lows it was more just a mixing thing i think when i did that there yeah i think it just sounded nicer with that so if i completely turn off all of that all of those effects that's how it sounds what's sound that's how it sounds with now in terms of that reverb which I said I was going to discuss, you see all these little automation clips down here and FL Studio is great for this. You can modulate certain sounds. So this is actually turning the reverb on and off. Um, this is turning the Valhalla one on and off, this one here. Because, you know, as I was playing it on its own through the pattern, it sounded, you know, you probably would have noticed the reverb is a little bit, it's really wet. It didn't quite sound right on its own when it wasn't in the song. Um, and so that's because and what these are doing here if I go back to the pattern you'll hear it's a lot more wet with reverb or well, this is triggering it and as you can see like literally it's just linked to that there so yeah, so it's just, and you can hear it's a lot more cleaner in there as well. Now, the other ones which I want to discuss is this here. And as you can see, watch watch this little dot here as well, because it turns on and off every now and then. This is 100% down, like, I do this in almost every single song. And to make sure that doesn't sound muffled as well, I turn it on on the note where I want the reverb tail to be so just on that one note and turn it straight off again so it's you know not going to get those reverb swirls are going to get muddled up if I um show you what it's like without that actually if I just turn it on 
it's only a little bit more messy, but you can hear that. You hear that difference, just everything is, especially around when it came to this part here, just reverb was just came out of nowhere. Don't want that. So, yeah, that is how the actual lead sound was made. Now, let's go to the bass. Quite a thick sounding bass. Now, let's see how we made that. Okay, so we've got five sounds. Now, these ones I would have made by myself. Um, it's called Destiny Bass uh, because there's another song which was in the works called that. Um, we have that one in time. And he uses the sound. And I think a very good person to go to about this is, uh, I think it's Virtual Riot is his name. Yeah, he's a really good dubstep producer. And he discusses how you can just like drag a percussion sound into this. And you can just, so for instance, if I just pick anything, um, where's Splice at? I'm not going to do it too much now, but let's say for instance, anything at all. A snare. You can bring it in here and then you can just drag it into there and you've got your own waveform. Um, yeah, it's a really nice way to make some quite unique sounds. And this is how I did mine. I'm not going to get too much into that one, but I did two instances of that. Got a sub, which was massive. Got this as well. And then a little bit, just that from Spire, you know, just almost like a vowel kind of flange and bass going on there. If I show you very quickly, um, it would be the phaser. The phaser, not flanger. Um, so yeah, that's how that sounds. There's one more sound going on there as well, I know. Um, oh no, actually, there's four more sounds going on there. Got that. Uh, where were the others going on? If I wants to load it up. This was the one I wanted to discuss. There we go. Again, just another Nexus patch just to fill things out. I didn't miss anyone, did I? This one, maybe? Yeah, that was it. Literally, just nine sounds then. All about going into one bass. And again, on their own, they're going to sound pretty shoddy. You know. And everything is kind of looping into one thing. So it's an absolute mess how these were all made. Um, my organisational skills are absolutely horrible. But in time, you just mess around. And you see what sounds nice eventually. So again, that's a processing on those. And there is a lot of heavy compression. So the ones which were more vocal, I've got this O22, eh, OTT going on there, which just really brings out the highs. There's a lot of processing to a point where I can't fully really explain it best. Um, it just takes time when learning how to do those kind of sounds. It really, really does. Um, and they all kind of fill that own place as well. It all loops back into this one here, which again, just adds on to a little bit of compression. Uh, a good little trick that I was taught when it came to compressing is it's really good to use two one ratios on multiple sounds. So for instance, I've got two one here. Um, I likely have, you know, for instance, it's, well, that one's very compressed actually, to be fair. Um, again, just lots of little compression on lots of different sounds will make it sound compressed, but nice, not too slammed. So, Try bearing that one in mind. If you've got any more questions about that bass, because that is just quite a quick run through on that, just drop me a message on my socials. I'll be more than happy to help out with that. There's not too much automation going on with that. Yeah, so that is how the bass sounds. There's only one other sound in terms of the synth, really, which is just these chords. I don't even want to play at the moment. Um... There's that. B sounds. I don't know why I put through a layer because it's just one. Um, another sound which people have been asking me about is 
this little break that happens here. Sorry. That and that would have been a serum patch, and I actually bounced it into audio because it was really messing with my CPU. So as you can see, the moment I did that, it was just really distracting to work with. Um, but yeah, that's the patch. Really not too difficult. It's two D tunes always. You'll see a pattern with my music here. It's pretty much one of the only sounds that I use. Um, again with some OTT just to make it a little bit crispy. I remember sub underneath. Just mapping that as well. That's really important actually because it just really gives that sound a lot more weight. And if I turn this back off. Ah, where is it? There. Really quite a simple sound to make actually. Now, other sounds which I think are quite important, oh, and I nearly didn't cover this actually. These. Again, just some ambient kind of sounds going on there, being filtered out. It's just again, it's all way with a chorus on there. It's got a little bit of a click at the top, which is just actually an error on my part. And that's the filter, as you can see here. I haven't done a sh I've done quite a sharp duck from the top to the bottom. As you can see, it just goes straight down. You shouldn't really do that. So, um, yeah, my bad on that. Um, but fortunately, you can't notice it too much. Now, the drums are really not too difficult on this part. Let me just show you very quickly. It's the same kick. And it's just claps with reverb. And they're just good samples, so just find a decent sample. And then the same drum kit from earlier comes in here. And then here, I've got a clap going on which hits the same as a clap. A ride. I've got a little triangle there as well, which sounds quite nice in the drop. And that is pretty much all there is to that part of the drop. The lead also changes with the melody. If it keeps going again. Just a little variation when it came to that part of the drop. So yeah, that is pretty much everything covered on that. Again, really sorry for the buffering, just it is quite a nasty sound. Um, the only other part was the fill in here. And admittedly, this was actually me, it just happened to sound nice, but I like to just use a simple saw sound when I'm mapping out. This actually came across by accident, I didn't, you know, I was just putting in chords being like, oh yeah, you know what, these chords are nice, I need to have a different sound in there. And instead, but it's just how nice it was. Yeah. Oh, all right. I believe that is most of what I've covered on the project. And obviously, without all the crackling and all of that. It sounds like that. Um. So yeah, that was just a really, really, really quick run through. Uh, I actually don't know how long I've been recording this for, so um, yeah, hopefully that was a really, really quick walk through on a lot of the sounds, how they were made, and gives you a little bit of an insight onto how a track like that is produced. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. If there was anything that I rushed over a little bit too much or that you weren't so sure on, just drop me a message. Um, I'm more than happy as well to discuss things like mixing, mastering. With regards to mixing and mastering, yeah, it all should be done in the mix. You noticed on that I had a lot of compression going on on each individual channel. I have a lot. So, for instance, just all of this stuff going on on this track. Sorry, one of my lights have just gone over there. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just the entire mixer. And I didn't master it in this, but the mastering really isn't much too different. You know, if you've got the mix right, all you need to do is just put on a limited on there and just make it loud because there'll be enough compression on the channels to make sure that it's not going to clip. So, I mean, that's just how I see that anyway. And again, with regards to vocals, anything that you want to know when it comes to that, 
just drop me a message, I'm more than happy to help with those. So yeah, I hope this has been helpful. I know it's been a bit of a quick and <laughs> potentially muffled run through at times, but yeah, fast still get chills and peace out.